Hello everyone, welcome to Shorthand Battle. I am Divya and I am going to dictate you a passage of 840 words from Progressive Magazine at the speed of 120 words per minute. So get ready for the dictation. 3, 2, 1 and go. Sir, now I go to the next point. What is the general tenor of most of the amending bills? Interestingly, after 1956, we had the amending bill of 1969. There were two bills in 1964. The general tenor of the bill was known whether it was restricting the corporate sector or it was liberal or for what purpose. But this particular bill is a little different in the sense that after the present government came to power, it announced policies which were very liberal to the corporate sector. Liberal does not mean that they can break the laws. Liberal means that the government lays down the framework of the industrial policy and within the framework of that policy, government wants to give the corporate sector a little leeway to operate. But here I find under section 270 or section 372, a whole new definition is given to intercorporate deposits, including deposits within the meaning of loan not only creates trouble for the corporate sector, it is violence to the English language. By no stretch of imagination can a deposit be termed a loan. We are making deposits in banks. They cannot be called loans. We are not giving loans under intercorporate deposit. To include it under the term loan is an atrocity and it will only affect the small and medium entrepreneurs. The bigger companies can get enough loans from companies from government institutions. In spite of our talk of socialism and decentralization, it is always the bigger companies which get the larger cake out of the government resources and it is the small and medium people who are hit hard by this provision. While ostensibly it is meant to protect the small man, the people who are really hit by the tenor of this bill are the small and medium entrepreneurs. The MRTP and FERA companies are not affected by this bill at all. I do not suggest that there should be any restriction put on MRTP or FERA companies which are not realistic. What I submit is in the scheme of the things, the industrial policy resolution from the time of Jawaharlal Nehru, which government still professes is a relevant document. I feel in terms of fulfilling those objectives, there should be restrictions only on MRTP and FERA companies. Small and medium sized companies should be outside the orbit of most of these restrictions. Only then will the company law be effective, otherwise this series of amendments may add to the plethora of amendments that we have been adding from year to year. Madam, I am on a point of order. The points I wish to make are to my belief of substance because there are no rules or precedents that exist on it. However, you might rule on them after you have heard my explanation. They will be setting precedents on the subjects. The very first question that I would like to raise and I have already written to you about this is the procedure and the method to be adopted while taking up a report of the house for consideration particularly when it is the report of the joint parliamentary committee. Here I would like to make a distinction between the methodology that is being adopted today and that which has been adopted by our parliament ever since it came into existence. 
I hold that it is for the first time ever that we are considering the report of a joint parliamentary committee through the medium of a short duration discussion. A short duration discussion in this house or I believe rule 193 in the other house is a parliamentary device for airing views for expressing or giving voice to a concern which is of some immediate public importance. This method adopted for discussing that which is the substantial enterprise of the two houses of parliament irrespective of the contents of the report is unsatisfactory. If this were merely to be discussed through the medium or the parliamentary device of short duration discussion, I do not think we are doing justice to report of a joint parliamentary committee. Now we would have accepted and it would have been normal to accept that in as important a matter as the report of a joint parliamentary committee, the government had come forward with a substantive motion that they accepted the report or should not have been made known to the house. Had they come forward with a substantive motion, perhaps some of us might have given motion of amendments. I have personally given notice of the motion, yet no day was named. My esteemed colleague has also given notice of the motion that this report be considered on a substantive motion and not through the medium of a short duration discussion. Had that been done, we would have been entitled to the following on some of the amendments that I have moved stop.